Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will learn about ideal diode and its characteristics, etc. Now, let's see first of all the uh, normal circuit diode forward biased. That means current is flowing from this end to this end. Diode this bar is representing like negative sign so this is the cathode and the other end uh, the triangle or the diamond is the anode side now when diode is forward biased we just like here let's say we have a 9 volt battery on the positive side and the negative is grounded then the diode is forward biased and in, in case of an ideal diode, we consider it to be a short circuit. So in the normal case, we used to consider that there is a barrier potential of 0.7 volt. But in case of an ideal diode, we just assume it to be uh, a short circuit. And when the voltage is on the other side, that means a positive voltage on the negative side then the diode becomes reverse bias no current can flow through this and we generally represent it by open circuit that is the diode is open now when it is short circuit obviously since there is no resistance therefore the voltage will be zero because we know voltage is i into r since R is 0, therefore voltage is 0. Whereas in case of an open circuit, the total supply voltage will appear across the open circuit. And now this is the characteristics of the diode. Uh, this means that the moment we apply a positive voltage, like here, the diode will straight away conduct uh, maximum current so this is immediately after the applied voltage becomes positive it starts conducting now here is a command it says this is severely non-linear IV curve now this is between I and V curve so this is a non-linear IV curve but if you compare it with this curve, this is a linear curve, it's like a uh, equation of a straight line. Uh, so this is linear curve and this is non-linear curve because immediately we are getting the maximum voltage, uh, sorry, maximum current the moment we applying uh, a voltage. Now here uh, two diagrams, two models of operation of an ideal diode and the use of an external circuit uh, to limit so the, generally whenever we connect a diode we connect uh, some kind of a resistance to limit the current so this is the, called the limiting resistance and now if you see this is forward bias because the negative is grounded and positive is connected with the battery whereas in this case the negative is grounded, uh, connected with the positive side of the battery and positive is grounded, so this will behave like a reverse bias diode. And as we said that in case of an ideal diode, we consider this to be a short circuit. And so if you have to find the current through this, the current will be volt divided by resistance, so it will be 10 milliampere. On the other hand, since this is reverse bias, therefore we will consider this to be an open circuit and uh, no current is flowing through the open circuit, so current will be zero, but this whole voltage will appear across this, so the voltage at this point will be 10 volt, whereas voltage at this point was zero volt. And some students have a confusion, how come this voltage will be 10 volts so let me just uh, give you an example let's say you have a car battery or a normal battery 10 volt battery and if you take two wires 
no matter how far you go the voltage if you measure will be 10 volt okay so same case here if we just modify this diagram little bit so if the battery is connected through a resistance like here 10 volt is connected through a resistance and this is open and the other is connected to the ground same scenario almost same scenario so here was 10 volt here also will be 10 volt and since it is an open circuit and therefore no current is flowing so current will be zero volt so voltage across an open circuit uh, will be same as the source voltage okay now uh, this is a simple application of a diode rectifier and this is called half wave rectifier so we'll see why okay because when the positive signal comes the positive peak the diode will become forward biased because positive on this side and negative on the other side and so this will conduct and this becomes short circuit therefore the current will start flowing through this and i into r will be the output voltage so let's see here this is the case the diode becomes short circuit the voltage output will become uh, same as the input voltage and so we can just duplicate the input to the output side so this is the output voltage and it is called rectifier because it is not letting the negative half go and it is only allowing the positive half go and obviously it is half of the cycle now this is complete cycle one cycle so only half of the cycle is passing and that is why it is also called half wave rectifier and now when we are applying the negative uh, side then obviously the diode will become like a reverse bias so it will behave like an open circuit no current will flow output voltage here will be zero across the resistance but the voltage across the diode or the open circuit will be same as the input voltage okay so now this is the voltage out uh, volt out that is the voltage across the resistance will be zero volt now couple of exercise questions or small questions for the circuit uh, sketch the transfer characteristics v0 versus v1 now we have seen this that when it is positive half cycle the positive is going and at negative negative is stopped or it is uh, the output is zero so in this case we can say that v0 is equal to vi v output is equal to v input and if we compare with the straight line equation y is equal to mx plus c you can see that here the slope is 1 this is y and this is uh, vi is x and you can assume that there is a 1 multiplying with this so slope of this is 1 and so if we want to plot we will plot it with the slope 1 so this is the line so how, uh, whatever is in the x axis same amount is on the y axis so slope is 1 and in this case we know that when the uh, input is negative the output is 0 now this was the positive side so what we'll do that when we are in the negative side the output will be 0 so we'll plot it like this that in the negative side the output is 0 and the net uh, plot will be this summation of the two so this is the uh, uh, out, uh, transfer characteristics of diode in this case we have to for the circuit sketch the waveform of vd so the uh, voltage waveform across the diode now we have to um, plot 
again we'll take help of the same we know that when the positive half comes the diode is open circuit, uh, short circuit so no voltage drop across the diode and all uh, will appear across the output but when this is open the output is zero but this whole voltage will appear across the open circuit and so we can plot this now same logic that the when there is open the input voltage appears at the uh, open circuit and so this will be the voltage across the diode this input will appear as the output voltage uh, sorry not output voltage rather voltage across the diode and question number three for the circuit let v1 have a peak voltage of 10 volts so this peak is 10 volt and we have a resistance of 1 kilo this resistance find the peak value of the id that is the diode current now this whole current is diode current and the dc component of v0 so whatever was v0 we'll have to take its average value okay so we can straight away say that i peak is v peak over r v peak is 10 here so 10 over 1 kilo is 10 milliampere so that is the first part and now we have to find the dc component of output so now this is a form, uh, formula you can use that for a half wave rectifier if this is the peak v max then the average is v average is 0 0.2 uh, uh, 318 V max. There is another formula also you can use V DC is V max over pi. Same same result you will get. So we know V max is 10. So V average is 0 0.3 peak. So 0 0.318 into 10, 3.8. You get same same result if you divide it. That is 10 divided by pi is also 3.8. One eight. So let's discuss example 4.1 solved in the book. And the question says figure 4.4 shows a circuit for charging a 12 volt battery. So this is the 12 volt battery that we want to charge. And this is the circuit for that. It's a half wave rectifier. A VS is a sinusoid with 24 volts peak amplitude. So the input has a maximum amplitude of 24 volt find the fraction of each cycle during which the diode will conduct so we'll have to find out for how much portion the diode is conducting how much portion of the whole cycle the diode is conducting uh, obviously the reason is that to conduct this input voltage has to be more than 12 volts it is going from 0 to 24 so the, the, when it crosses 12 volt, only then this diode will conduct. So that is why we have to find out for how much duration the diode is conducting. And next is, we have to find the peak value of the diode current. And also we have to find the maximum reverse bias voltage that appears across the diode. So how much is the reverse voltage applied across this diode? Okay, so let's see. The first part, this is the uh, circuit and this is the input voltage, 24 volt peak. Now because of the 12 volt battery, the diode will only conduct when the input signal is greater than 12. So I hope I understand this, that for conduction of the diode will only become forward bias because there is a 12 volt here. So when this input side becomes more than 12, say 12.1, 12.5, 13, 14, then this diode will conduct. So when this, this voltage is now starting from zero and the moment it crosses 12, only the then diode will start conducting and then it reaches peak 24, then coming down, 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 the moment it becomes less than 12, the diode will stop conducting. So this concept you have to keep in mind. 
Okay, so this is how we define that. The, this is the battery board, 12 uh, volt battery. Above this, the diode will conduct. So we can show it like this. This is the diode conduction. The uh, shape, wave shape, and this is the diode current. Now, we have to find this duration in terms of an angle when the diode is conducting between this range. Okay. Now, again, um, this I have drawn separately to show that this is the, either we find the, these two ranges and then we can calculate this. Uh, so let's see, first of all, that. The signal in this case is 24 sine theta. So this is the 24 maximum, 24 volt maximum. And I'm assuming that this is a sine signal. So the signal will be called 24 sine theta. We just need to calculate the point on the waveform that coincides with 12 volt. So when this wave signal is greater than or equal to 12 volt, then conduction will start. So we have to first of all find this point. So we can say that 24 sine theta is equal to 12 volt. And from here we can say sine theta is 0 0.5 and inverse of sine theta, uh, if you take then theta is equal to 30 degree. I hope you know you can use your calculator to find. So this is the point, this point or let's say this point from 0 to this point is 30 degree. So after 30 degree it will start conducting and the moment it reaches this point then it will stop conducting and further also this angle is 30 degree. This means that at 30 degree into the half uh, sine wave form conduction begins. So conduction begins at this point and at 30 degrees before the half sine falls to zero the conduction stops. So the conduction stops 30 degree before up to this point. Half a sine wave is 180 degrees. So this is 180 degree. We have found this to be 30 degree and this 30 degree. So 60 uh, you can subtract from 180 and so the conduction time will be 180 minus 30 minus 30 that is 120 degree. So this is one way. In the book he has used cosine signal so we can also do that just for your information. If we assume this signal to be a cosine signal like this then we can say that the signal is 24 cosine theta. 24 cosine theta when it comes to 12 the conduction will stop. So from here we can find cosine uh, 0.5 or theta is 60 degree. That means from 0 to this point is 60 degree. And so 60 on this side of so the conduction period will be uh, 120 degree. And that is why you can see this, this is theta and this diagram he has shown the conduction period to be 2 theta. So theta on this side and theta on, on this side and becomes 2 theta. Okay, and now we uh, come to the um, other two parameters that we have to find. We have to find the diode current and we have to find the maximum reverse voltage. Now the diode current is obviously you can see that this is the region, this for this voltage uh, is causing the diode current to conduct. So that means it is 24 minus 12. So the voltage is 24 minus 12 and the resistance is 100 ohm. So ID is 0 0.2 ampere. And now let's come to the reverse voltage. Now what is reverse voltage is that when this becomes negative, first of all let's assume this is at 0. So when this voltage is 0, this voltage 12 volt battery is acting against the diode. So this is the reverse uh, voltage 12 volt but this will go maximum minus 12 uh, sorry minus 24 so we can add that with this 
so it will be 24 plus 12 so it will be 36 volt that will be the reverse voltage this one here you see this is minus 24 of maximum and the battery um, voltage 12 so the total will be 12 and 24 36 in the negative direction or in the reverse direction so i hope this gives you an idea how to solve this type of a problem thank you